Have you ever found yourself held captive by a dark cycle of thoughts? They trickle in one at a time. Then they pile up. Pretty soon they take up so much space there isn't room for anything else in your brain. Kind of like a prison. Before you know it, they literally consume you and make you feel like you're a prisoner in your own mind. Now there are physical gel cells and there are mental gel cells. And both are trying to steal your freedom. For some people, mental gel cells can be as terrifying as the real ones. Nothing makes you feel more isolated than being in bondage to your own thoughts. Life without liberty is like a body without a spirit. You feel alone, abnormal, and terrified. It feels like your whole life is a mistake. Maybe you wanna stop living, but you are not a mistake. Your situation you find yourself in is not over. You will start to heal when you let go of past hurts. Forgive those who have wronged you. And learn to forgive yourself for your past mistakes. I want you to hear me today. You are not a bad person. The enemy would want you to believe that. You may have done some things wrong, but you're not a bad person. Don't let the enemy deceive you. He wants to keep you in bondage. There's nothing Satan enjoys more than telling us lies about ourselves. When we hold on to those lies, they produce bad thoughts. But I don't believe God wants us to be held captive by our dark thoughts. Although our thoughts can certainly affect our moods, they aren't meant to control us. See, you were meant to be free. And here's the good news. You can be free in your mind, you can even be free in a real jail cell. He can set you free in any situation because we're not limited by human barriers. He can set you free wherever you are. He can set you free no matter what you've done because whom the sun sets free is free indeed, amen? You know, one, one day when Paul and Silas were in Philippi, they helped a slave girl and they made her owners very angry and they dragged Paul and Silas to the marketplace and told them lies really about them. And Paul and Silas were ridiculed, beaten, and then they were thrown into a prison cell. The jailer put them in chains and left their feet in heavy wooden blocks called stocks. But at midnight, everyone say it with me, at midnight. In the midnight hour, the other prisoners could hear Paul and Silas praying and singing hymns to God. Even though their backs were sore from the beating they had received, they still were able to praise God. And I can hear them singing chains fall. I can hear them singing. Even in the jail cell, I can hear them singing. Can you hear it today? Nothing can hold you. shook and the doors opened and the chains literally fell off. <laughs> I don't know what kind of chains hold you today. I don't know what fear keeps you in prison. I find yourself in is not over. God uses the dark places. They are part of his divine plan for your life. God wants to use your pain to unlock the door to your destiny. The chains that break you are the chains that make you. And the chains that make you are the chains you break today. Get ready. 
You're not only going to be set free, you're about to bring freedom to others. How many receive that today? Hallelujah. That's what my friend Lance did. He was in bondage most of his life, in and out of prison. But one day, when he wanted to end his life, God set him free in prison. He's been bringing life to others ever since. Watch his story. For me growing up, it was a little bit different, right? I really didn't have any discipline growing up. You know, with, with no communication, with no discipline, I was kind of on my own and I didn't have any boundaries. And without any boundaries, I ended up lost. I was trying to fill my heart. I was trying to fill my soul. I was trying to fill my spirit with every, all, all the horrible things you hear, drugs, alcohol. First time that I, I, I was uh, arrested was at 16 years old. The enemy comes to do three things, kill, steal, and destroy. And that's exactly what he did in my life. I believed every lie. I would go to prison. I would get out of prison. The enemy would just be right there. He would just have the same tactics. He would have the same tricks. I have a daughter. Her name is Gracie. I, I left when she was five. I can remember being in a situation, in a place where, where I felt like I was taking my last breath. I didn't like who I was as a person. I, I knew that who I was, I, that's not who I was called to be. That's not who I was meant to be. I felt like that I couldn't take another step. So I, I had got this Bible study from the Gospel Echoes, and, and I started doing it, and I really feel like that was the first time that I ever heard the Gospel of Christ, that I, that I ever heard the, the, the true message, how Jesus came and died for us, and how if we believe we would receive salvation. It was the first time that I'd actually heard that. And, and, and it was like every time, I just know that he was calling me. I, I knew that those words were screaming out that page, like, this is, <laughs> this is it, right? This is the time. This is, this is, this, I'm calling you. I was in my bunk. I was on tin bunk, a top bunk, and I was underneath a gray blanket when, when, I, when I laid it all out before the Father. I laid it all out before Jesus, and I went to sleep. But I woke up, and I may have looked the same on the outside, but on the inside, I was completely different. On the inside, I was a brand new man. On the inside, I was a new creation. On the inside, I went from who I was into who Jesus always meant for me to be. The prison system ended up getting these tablets, and we actually got Lakewood through on a, on a podcast. Pastor Joel, he's always been a figure in my life on the, on the outside, even, even in darkness. He, somehow or another, you, you, you hear his voice, right? Somehow or another, you hear him in the back scene. Prosperous, redeemed, I am a child of the Most High God. I will become all I was created to be. He's in prison. Every day I repeat that over and over again. And, and I would just, I mean, it's just not only me, but, but everyone that, that was around me. We were just, we were just surrounded by, by the love of Christ and just the love of people who truly loved us and cared about us and, and wanted us to go from who we were into who we were always meant to be and, and they're guiding us along the way. God had allowed me to, to do great things in prison, uh, learn great things, every class, every, every class that, that, that I could ever take, I took. Everything that I could do to, to better myself, I, I, I did that. I, I made a proactive and intentional decision to, to move forward with my life. In prison, I was, I was able to go to Bible college. I was able to go to seminary. I was, I was able to start preaching and start teaching. God had really moved in my life. He, he really put an anointing on my life, a blessing on my life. He just spoke through me, and, and I knew that it was him that was leading me. I just started giving people what God put inside of me. So my last year in prison was the was through uh, Lakewood Freedom. I got to meet um, Pastor John, Tommy, uh, Eric. I was able to be ministered by, by by Lakewood just just every single week. It was just 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 a great just a great encounter. The chaplain was there. Uh, they introduced the program uh, put together by Joel. It was just a, a year of of just discipleship. One thing that I'm grateful for is, is the God of the, the God is a God of restoration. God put it on my heart to, to keep reaching out to my daughter. So I just kept sending her letters week after week. 
she, she came to see me in prison when I graduated from the prison entrepreneurship program. The first time I'd seen her in quite some time. And, you know, hearing my daughter say, Dad, I forgive you. I love you. I want you in my life. I'm proud of you. It, it was an amazing moment. So once I got out of prison, the first time I was able to come to Lakewood, uh, Brother Eric, he, he came and picked me up from the transition center. He knew that I was a little worried about uh, my tattoos. Pastor Paul was preaching a message, and he said, I love to compliment people on their piercings and tattoos and dreadlocks and purple hair and see them for who they are, someone made in the image of God. So I knew God was talking to me. This is right where you need to be. Everything that I went through in prison, everything that he put in front of me, God knew that I would need those things. And, and he put me in position. He put me in position with a great job, an opportunity to, to work with a company where I have uh, 401k, where I have the ability to take care of my family. He put me in position to tell my testimony. He put me in position to tell the truth. But the enemy had me running just as fast as I could, just as hard as I could. He stole everything inside of me. But luckily, Jesus came. Amen. Would you welcome Lance and his daughter here today? Woo! This is a miracle. What does it mean for you to be standing here with your daughter today? There's no door in your life that Jesus can't open. There, there's nothing you can come against that, that, that he can't handle. There's nothing you can bring to him that he's going to be surprised of. He's ready and he's waiting for you. That's awesome. What would you tell somebody today, Lance, that maybe is in their own prison? It could be a physical one. You know, you, some of the inmates that are out there, and then also it could be a prison in their thoughts. What would you say to them today? I would say that Jesus is a way maker. Jesus is a miracle worker. <laughs> Jesus is a promise keeper. Jesus is the light in the darkness. All you got to do is say the name Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Every chain breaks at the name of Jesus. Jesus is king, now and forever, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. If that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. Maybe you're in a prison today. Maybe it's in your thoughts. Maybe you're watching online and you feel that way. We just want to pray with you right now. We just want to speak over you right now that God could do for you what he's done for Lance. Father, right now, we just pray for everyone that is out there right now. No matter what they're walking through, the enemy would try to close our mind with these thoughts, these bad thoughts, these dark thoughts. He would try to keep us in bondage, but whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And Father, we believe you're setting people free today from the bondage that the enemy will put on them. That they're not only free in their mind, Father, but they're free in their life. And you're going to restore them. You're going to open up doors for them. And just like Lance, God, you're going to do miracles in their life. Let them do what Lance said. Let them speak your name, Jesus, no matter what situation they're in today. And Father, we believe that their past days are not behind them. They are in front of them. They are being set free. They are being restored. They are coming back to you. And God, everything is coming back in your time, in your place. And we give you all the glory for it today. And if you believe that today, come on, can you say a big amen? God bless you today.